Hey guys, how's it going? So today, let's take a look at some mods that either overhaul existing mechanics or just expand on some of the existing game mechanics that sometimes I feel aren't as fleshed out as they could be or kind of need a little, a little tweaking and a little touching up to make them a little bit better than what we got from the developers. So let's get started with the first one. So first up, we have the Invesa Traders. This is from Spice It Up. This is by Tobin and Griff. It's a really simple mod. All this does is allow Waha Desher and Caduce Anatoni to actually act as neutral traders. Now, they don't send ships out to buy anything from your trading post, but they do have goods that you can buy from them. The screenshot provided right here does show us that Waha Desher will provide milk, uh, Senga cows, linseed, salt, hibiscus, flax, lobsters, spices, and beeswax. Caduce Anatoni also offers a selection of goods, and I just like these kind of simple mods because to me, Anno 1800 is a game about trade. Uh, it's all about trade between your islands, neutral traders, any AI on the map. It's all about trade and everything else. And I always felt like Land of Lions kind of was lacking in that respect. All you had there was the Emperor. He was it. Uh, he would buy and sell stuff to you. He had some ships that would come around, but that was it. The islands, uh, Wahadesher, Kadusi, and then also Angarab, kind of get left behind. They kind of just are forgotten about once you either do the story or if you skip the story and just do the optional side quests for them to get those regional bonuses. Once you're done, you're done with them. Uh, this right here at least gives you some options to trade with them, buy some goods from them. Obviously, you're not going to be able to supply your entire economy from these goods right here, but they will help to kind of offset so you can buy some stuff from them and sell stuff to them as well. You can also buy items from them, and they do have some requested goods that have a little bit extra income from them, so you can make some extra coin. So again, a very simple mod that just expands on some things about the Land of Lions that I feel were kind of left behind a little bit and just made the region feel a little less exciting. Next up, we have the New World Tourism mod. Now, this is a mod by Tabin and Griff and Jacob in a collaboration. And again, just a fantastic, simple mod that brings the Tourist Season DLC into the New World. I feel, again, the New World kind of got the back seat for most of Anno 1800's uh, life cycle until at least Season 4, when we got a lot of New World-focused content in it. Other than that, the New World really was just kind of ignored, and it was mostly just a support region for the Old World and Cape Trelawney. With Season 4, we got a big focus on the New World, and with New World Tourism, we can finally bring some more of that other extra content into the region by having tourists here now. It's a fully realized adaptation of the Tourist Season DLC into the New World, with hotels, the tourist mooring, the need for bus stations, and all the stuff that goes with it. Going by the description down here, uh, the tourism buildings are unlocked at 1,500 Abreos and 4,000 Old World Tourists, so you will need to build up your Old World Tourists quite a bit and your Obreros quite a bit. And there are some special recipes available in the region as well. The restaurant has the churrasco, the uh, pomona bread, the enchiladas. The cafe has banana bread, sorbets, and bananas foster. The bar has the, I cannot pronounce that word, I'm not even going to attempt to, uh, Navigado and the Secret of Monkey Island. And of course, this mod does have the special monument called the Cristo Redentor, which is a monument from Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. So that brings that monument into the game. It's an excellent mod, definitely suggested because it does expand on that new world and tourist content right there so if you love building in the new world definitely get this mod this mod pairs really really well with new world rising dlc from the ubisoft minds team and if you have downloaded and you are playing the new colossus of the new world mod by talidus this also incorporates with his mod and you get some additional options for Talidus's mod with this mod installed, so they kind of go hand in hand. Speaking of Talidus, we are going to be taking a look now at his Wholesome Hacienda Overhaul. This to me is a must-have. 
If you are playing with the Seeds of Change DLC, you need this mod in your list. Even if you're not a big fan of mods, get this one. The Wholesome Hacienda Overhaul adds an entire new tab for the Hacienda. It's no longer a building hidden underneath the Obrero stuff where you have to now click on the Hacienda and build modules off of it. It is now its own fully recognized tab, and he has expanded it considerably. Now, instead of just having the Hacienda, a warehouse, some production buildings, farms, and Ornolero, Obrero, and Artista houses with the New World Rising DLC, it is now its own self-contained city almost. You get access to lots of new content in there, including some unique building types. He has added public service buildings for the hospital, churches, fire stations, police stations. All of that has its own version within the mod now. There are also smaller versions of some of the homes. Instead of the big Obrero and Ornolero and Artista quarters, now is now a smaller version of it to fit into some of those tighter spaces. Most all of the buildings added for the mod have been updated graphically and made to fit within the theme of the Hacienda, so it is a really, really well done uh, modeling and texture work by Talidus. One really big change that a lot of people might not be prepared for is that the Hacienda now can grow all types of crops. It's not limited by the types of crops you can grow. However, you are now restricted to only the crops that have fertilities on that island. In the regular Seeds of Change DLC, you could put a Hacienda corn farm on an island that does not have corn fertility and it would still work. However, with this mod, you do have to worry about fertilities again. However, that's perfectly fine because the way the Haciendas have been restructured, you're going to want Haciendas on all the islands. They are very, very well worth it now and totally something you want to build everywhere and have as many of your farms as possible be the Hacienda versions. There's so much information about this within the mod description that I can't, I'm not going to read all of it, but just a few things. Things of the Hacienda streets have been limited to 999 tiles combined for an unknown reason. No longer. We don't have to do that. You can now build Hacienda streets just like any normal road, and they have no other restrictions on how many you can build. They can now also go over rivers and train tracks as well, which is amazing. Not being able to drag those Hacienda roads over rivers and train tracks was such an annoyance. But now we have fully realized bridges and train crossings for the Hacienda streets. One of the big overhauls is the Hacienda residences. The Ornoleros the Ornolero residences now can hold up to 85 population each with lifestyle needs. Before, the Hacienda quarters were kind of weak, and you typically wouldn't actually want to build them because the amount of goods that they needed compared to the amount of population per tile was not as good as just building regular homes. With the changes to the mod, you now really are incentivized to have some Obrero Residences do get three points of attractiveness by default, though, to help you reach some of those higher Hacienda policies so you don't have to spam out lots of chapels with town hall items to give attractiveness to chapels or tons of zoos and museums. And speaking of those Hacienda policies, those have also been completely reworked and they are a lot more interesting. I'm not going to read through all of them, but you can take a pause right here in the video and kind of skim down through all of the changes and everything that he does for the different policies. They are completely new policies. Uh, you're not pretty much going to be just only using the reduced food and drink needs all the time now. Now you can actually kind of structure your islands around different concepts of what you want being built there. It's a really, really much better and well done policy system right here that Talidus has done, and I absolutely love it. But if you do add this mid-game, just be ready that your policies that you might be using are going to change, and you may have to kind of go and restructure some of your islands if you use this. Next up, we have the Industrial Low Tier Production by Kurilla. This game is all about the Industrial Revolution. You start out with farmers and fisheries and sheep farms, and you know, you kind of move into some bread production. And by the end of the game, you know, we're making steam carriages and scooters and fans, and we have cinemas in the new world. Yet back on some of our other islands for our farmers and workers, you know, we're still producing stuff the old fashioned way. So why not bring some of those basic early game industries into the Industrial Revolution themselves? 
This mod adds new advanced buildings for productions that include the, a large bakery, an electrical flour mill, textile factory, a large schnapps distillery, advanced sawmills, advanced sailmakers, sausage factories, a large furnace, large steelworks, large soap factory, large rendering works, an industrial pig farm, and an industrial cattle farm. All of these unlock in the artisan phase of the game, which is kind of when you're starting to move into that more industrial revolution area. And, and they are a more efficient, although they do take more space, they are more expensive, and they do take more workforce. But it is definitely a really nice way to transition more of your city into that industrial revolution and not have some of those low tier, old school style buildings on some of your bigger islands. To add on to that one right there, Carilla also brought us the large fishery right here. Again, this is just bringing that fishery into a more modern industrial feel. Instead of just being a standard little bitty fishery, fishing hut type building, this is now a more fishery pier type thing that is a little more modern looking and not nearly as old school. So you can bring your fishing into the industrial era. Now, the last two mods we're going to look at are both by Jacob, and it is the Industrial Cities mod and the New World Cities mod, both of those by Jacob. Industrial Cities and the New World mod both add an entire new way of building your workers and artisans and ornoleros and obreros and artistas as well. For the Old World, we have terraced workers and terraced artisan homes. These add a lot more industrialized looking buildings into our cities. We can now have those large tenement style row houses of workers in our industrial areas of the city and they fit in so, so nicely. Both levels of those terraced buildings for both the artisans and the workers can be upgraded one time using the skyscraper upgrade mechanic. By supplying them with all their needs, then they will be upgraded into a slightly taller building level with a, with a few more needs. On top of just that, this mod also adds in some new types of industrial complexes. The rendering works, the soap factory, the sewing machine factory, and the tools factory, which is a new type of good, can all be merged together. So the rendering works has a new type of look to it. And if you build double of, if you build more than one of those together, they will actually connect in and create a, an industrial complex looking building. The same with the soap factory, sewing machines, and tools. Those all have some different looks to them, and as you combine them together, it will create a, a larger looking building. It's a really cool visual look. If we take a look at this one right here, this is actually the tools factory. And as you can see, he has several modules put together. He has six modules right here, and they all connect in to create a large factory space right here. So instead of it being six of the same building next to each other, it now creates an entire new look for it. It's really, really cool. As mentioned, the terraced homes as well have a uh, their own set of needs and everything else as well. We also now need sardines, suits, and tea. Now, if you have the High Life DLC, again, you can have the second level of those terraced homes. Once you supply them with all the needs from, from before, then you can upgrade those to a second level. They have a few more requirements, and one of those being power. And you can also now build smaller power plants for your cities. Smaller coal, oil, and gas power plants as well as a fuel station with an integrated oil pump so you don't have to deliver oil directly to the fuel station. It will supply its own fuel. So that's a really cool little quality of life feature right there. Industrial Cities is definitely a must-have mod. The New World Cities mod is very similar where it has terraced versions. If we see in this screenshot right here, these right here are actually Ornolero houses and then there are obreros and then artistas. So an entirely new look of terraced homes that connect together, have corner buildings and stuff, so you can make a really neat looking new world city and not feel like it's all straw hut kind of stuff sitting around. So really, really awesome additional mod right here. A lot of these terraced homes come with their own special needs and everything that you can supply. So it just expands on the existing gameplay and makes it feel like you truly are advancing your cities and they are growing with you as you advanced through the game. So give both the Industrial Cities and the New World Cities mods a look. Really, really well done. Definitely recommend these in your game. You'll really not want to play without them once you get started. I know I just don't think I ever could. 
Now, this is just a quick bonus. If you are using Jacob's Industrial Cities DLC, go grab this right here from Mr. Kuki or Koki. I'm probably mispronouncing your name. I am so sorry. This is the London Suburbs Skin Pack. What this does is it adds a special skin. This is only for Jacob's Industrial Cities DLC. This adds a new skin for the artisan buildings. This skin is gorgeous. It adds this in this London 19th, 19th, early 20th century feel to all of the buildings. They look phenomenal in the game and they really make your cities have this truly English industrial London kind of feel to them. I can't even explain it, but I absolutely love it. And I don't think I can ever turn this skin pack off now that I'm using it in my games. So if you're using Jacob's mods, go check this one right here out for his terraced artisan homes and pop it on all of them and you'll see a drastic change in your city. All right, guys, that is it for this list of mods right here. These are just some mods that, again, I feel like they expand on the existing gameplay and just flesh it out a little bit more and make it feel a little more impactful when you're upgrading your residential tiers or building a new type of residential tier that makes that makes this whole industrial revolution that's happening in the game feel more impactful as well as just overhauling some of the content in the game to make it feel a little bit more coherent and useful at times and not have so many problems with it. Let me know what you think down below. Let me know some mods you're at let me know some mods that you absolutely love and cannot play without. I definitely want to take a look at them and we may be adding them in the next list. Until then guys, take care and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.